After many years, the story of Starliner's delay finally reached a triumphant conclusion. With the successful launch of its first astronaut to the ISS, Boeing never seems to get it right. For years, they have been developing the Starliner spacecraft, a project that was supposed to be operational years ago. But they faced constant delays and hurdles, so much so that everyone got frustrated with them and started to believe that the spacecraft would never become fully usable. Boeing's first crewed Starliner launched earlier this month on the 5th and arrived at the International Space Station on the 6th. What was originally intended to be an approximately a week-long stay has since been extended by quite a bit. The agency just announced a new target return date will be June 22nd, about another week away. Following liftoff, this spacecraft encountered numerous challenges, from the journey to the ISS during its stay there and even as it prepares for its return trip. So on today's episode of AB Space, let's dive into a summary of Starliner's recent problems and explore what lies ahead for this pioneering mission. In recent days, Starship Flight 4 has captured the spotlight in the aerospace industry, over shadowing the attention on Starliner's first crewed flight. However, the issues surrounding Starliner are equally noteworthy. Firstly, we must congratulate NASA, Boeing and ULA on their success in launching this crewed flight after numerous delays. However, they appeared very dedicated to making up for their constant delays by launching a successful crewed mission to the International Space Station. Yet again, they faced many problems. They planned to launch the crew multiple times. But issues kept cropping up, forcing them to abort the missions. This achievement marks their initial step into the orbital crew launch market, where their rival SpaceX's Dragon is currently dominating. Despite the competition, SpaceX's founder Elon Musk graciously congratulated them, saying, Congratulations on a successful launch. But despite its significant strides, Starliner still faces numerous challenges. Let's dive in on them. Firstly, you might recall Starliner's five delays before its eventual launch. Three of these incidents involved helium leaks. Despite the potential risks, the decision was made to launch Starliner on the 5th of June. Instead, the agency commented that the mission was expected to last about one week. Right after liftoff, two more helium leaks occurred, escalating anxiety to its peak. Fortunately though, the spacecraft continued its journey to the ISS. However, another issue soon arose. Two reaction control system jets failed, resulting in the malfunction of five out of the 28 reaction control system thrusters. Fortunately, during this mission, four of the five malfunctioning thrusters were restored, allowing the spacecraft to reach the ISS. At approximately 1.34 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on June 6, the connection between Starliner and the ISS was confirmed. But the challenges didn't end there. After arriving at the station, Starliner encountered yet another helium leak. A few days later, just as NASA announced that Starliner would postpone its return schedule. To support a spacewalk, a fifth leak appeared on the spacecraft. Besides technical problems, Starliner also faced issues with its mission schedule. The reason has to do with the margin being available and teams will need to complete additional testing on the spacecraft along with ensuring they pick a good return date. Here we'll go more in depth into the recent extension, the remaining plans will out the station. What tests need to be completed and more. In other words, going into it, when Starliner had docked to the station, they had options in terms of how long they could stay, when they would depart, and even the exact landing location after re-entry. With this in mind, the first real date we were provided came on June 9th when NASA tweeted saying, NASA and Boeing space team set a return date of no earlier than Tuesday, June 18th for the agency's Boeing crew flight test. The additional time in orbit will allow the crew to perform a spacewalk on Thursday, June 13th, while engineers complete Starliner system checkouts. This leads up to yesterday, the 14th, when we got another update from the agency. Here in a statement that commented, NASA and Boeing now are targeting no earlier than Saturday, June 22nd, to return the agency's Boeing crew flight test mission from the International Space Station. The extra time allows the team to finalize departure planning and operations while the spacecraft remains cleared for crew emergency return scenarios within the flight rules, they said. 
According to the initial plan, astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams were to spend a week at the station before returning to Earth. However, that time has passed and Starliner has not yet returned. So why the delay? Providing more of an explanation, Steve Stish, manager of NASA's commercial crew program was quoted saying, We are continuing to understand the capabilities of Starliner to prepare for the long-term goal of having a perform a six-month docked mission at the space station. The crew will perform additional hatch operations to better understand its handling, repeat some safe haven testing, and assess piloting using the forward window, he said. Interestingly, in addition to some of these general checkouts, they're also doing some extra thruster checks. Specifically, the agency wrote in a statement, NASA and Boeing teams also prepared plans for Starliner to fire seven of its eight aft-facing thrusters while docked to the station to evaluate thruster performance for the remainder of the mission. Known as a hot-fire test, the process will see two bursts of the thrusters, totaling about a second. As part of a Pathfinder process to evaluate how the spacecraft will perform during future operational missions after being docked to the space station for six months. The crew will also investigate cabin air temperature readings across the cabin to correlate to the life support system temperature measurements, they said. While this statement doesn't reference any specific issues, the RCS thrusters have had a few complications so far on this mission. As mentioned, NASA announced that the mission would be extended until June 18th, so that the two astronauts could support the spacewalk mission US EVA-90. Unfortunately, this mission was canceled because the astronauts experienced discomfort with their suits, disrupting CFT-1's plans, and rendering the extension unnecessary. The agency stated, the extra time allows the team to finalize departure and planning operations. While the spacecraft remains cleared for crew emergency return scenarios within the flight. Rules Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program, explained in a mission blog post. We are continuing to understand the capabilities of Starliner to prepare for the long-term goal of having it perform a six-month docked mission at the space station. As Stitch noted, this preparation is essential for Starliner's future crew missions under NASA's contract, which will last up to six months, similar to the ongoing Dragon missions. Various reasons have been provided, but in my opinion, these time extensions are meant to give NASA and Boeing more time to fix the helium leaks and thruster failures. As Starliner began its approach to the space station for docking, five reaction control system thrusters failed off during flight. These are the small thrusters the spacecraft uses for minute adjustments on orbit, such as docking to the ISS. When the issue was found, they decided to hold the spacecraft and run some tests. Officially, they waited at the 200-meter hold point near the station. The test consisted of hot firing the effective thrusters. This managed to re enable four of the five thrusters while the crew manually piloted the spacecraft at the station's 200 meter hold. Also, one of Starliner's aft facing reaction control system thrusters, capable of about 85 pounds of thrust, remains deselect as teams continue to evaluate its performance. Earlier, they mentioned that ground teams plan to fire all 28 RCS thrusters after undocking to collect additional data signatures on the service module thrusters before the hardware is accepted. All this being said, the agency and Boeing don't seem too concerned with a lot of these complications. In regard to the mission extension to the 22nd, Mark Nappy, vice president and program manager of the commercial crew program at Boeing was quoted saying, we have an incredible opportunity to spend more time at the station and perform more tests which provide invaluable data unique to our position. As the integrated NASA and Boeing teams have said each step of the way, we have plenty of margin and time on the station to maximize the opportunity for all partners to learn, including our crew, he said. It seems that both NASA and Boeing would like a bit more time at the station to not only conduct science, but also make sure the spacecraft is capable of a safe and controlled departure following re-entry. In a few days on the 18th, they plan to hold a media briefing where we can expect to receive even more information on the extension and what the plan is in the following days. The overall goal of this mission is to certify Starliner as a safe and capable crew vehicle for future flights at the station. As part of this, the crew has been very busy over the last week or so. So far, NASA astronauts, Blitch Wilmore and Sonny Williams have completed numerous flight objectives required for NASA certification of Boeing's transportation system for flights to the orbiting laboratory and at the agency's commercial crew program. 
Over the past three days in particular, Wilmore and Williams have performed tasks as part of the space station team, including installing research equipment, maintaining the lab's hardware, and helping station crew members prepare for a spacewalk. Starting on the 7th, about one day after docking, the first unloaded cargo, charged tablets, and reviewed emergency procedures to prepare for the safe haven operational capability checkout. Wilmore and Williams also met with Boeing teammates on the ground to talk about their experiences so far, including crew interactive type items like spacesuits, seats, cargo bag placement, maneuverability in the interior, food, sleeping arrangements, hatch operations, and lighting. The next day began with the Boeing engineers and flight control teams powering the spacecraft down and back up ahead of a scheduled safe haven demonstration. The ability to shelter in the spacecraft or depart the station quickly is a requirement of any visiting crew vehicle. In the safe haven configuration, Starliner's own systems would be used to provide air and other essentials to astronauts during a contingency. Expedition crews occasionally move into their spacecraft as space debris is predicted to pass by or if solar radiation is higher than usual. Here, Wilmore commented, we practiced a safe haven event where we could use this as a lifeboat. If something, say a conjunction, or something was about to intercede with a space station, some space debris, then we would all go screwy to our spacecraft and hunker down and hopefully everything passes. We went through that process today, closing the hatches, everything, and it was quite a successful event, they said. On the 9th, Wilmore and Williams performed dock space-to-space -space audio checks, installed a window cover designed for long-duration missions and performed a dry run of undock vehicle power-up and propulsion system checkout procedures. Starliner's surface module batteries were also checked out and are fully charged for the next leg of the crew flight test journey. By the 11th, the crew continued supporting International Space Station activities, having worked through all Starliner flight test objectives and operational capability checkouts with the exception of those associated with the next phase of flight. Our experienced test pilots have been overwhelmingly positive of their flight on Starliner, and we can't wait to learn more from them and the flight data to continue improving the vehicle, said Mark Nappy. Wilmore and Williams also spent Tuesday working on biomedical activities and gene sequence training. Most recently, on June 13, they helped astronauts Matt Dominic and Tracy Dyson suit up and prepare for a planned spacewalk to remove a faulty electronics box from a communications antenna on station, and to collect samples of microorganisms on the exterior of the orbiting laboratory. When the spacewalk was later called off, Wilmore and Williams helped them get back out of their extravehicular activity spacesuits. Later, the Starliner crew took an inventory of the food and water that had been used up to this point. They also worked with flight controllers to update a USB drive that is often refreshed with new information for return scenarios like weather conditions that can be downloaded to their tablets and used for an unlikely situation where crew would need to quickly leave the ISS. Eventually, on the 22nd, assuming the state doesn't change, Starliner will be packed, powered up, and prepared for departure. Next, the docking mechanism would disengage, letting Starliner slowly drift away from the space station. After a flyer on inspection, Starliner conducts a series of burns to take it safely away and position it for deorbit. Additionally, they will perform safe haven drills, preparing the capsule for potential emergencies by simulating scenarios where the Starliner would serve as a refuge in case of issues aboard the space station. Despite these ambitious plans, Boeing's goal of making the Starliner commercially operational by 2025 appears challenging given the persistent technical issues the spacecraft has faced. These issues not only delay current missions, but also cast doubt on the spacecraft's readiness for long-term routine use. Moreover, Boeing's choice of rocket launcher has also been a point of contention. The United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket, which currently launches the Starliner, is reliable but costly and not as versatile as some newer alternatives. The Atlas V's high cost per launch and its reliance on Russian-made RD-1-80 engines have raised concerns about its long-term sustainability and geopolitical implications. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon rockets offer a more cost-effective and flexible solution. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets have demonstrated high reliability and reusability, significantly reducing the cost per launch. SpaceX's ability to rapidly iterate and address issues has set a new standard in the industry. 
making their rockets an attractive option for future Starliner launches. This shift could enhance Boeing's ability to meet its commercial objectives by 2025, provided they can resolve the technical issues with the Starliner itself. This leads into Earth's entry and finally a landing. It looks like Starliner will be staying a bit longer at the space station than originally planned. They are now targeting a date of June 22nd, which gives them more time to conduct tests and certify the spacecraft for future crewed missions. These two systems are crucial for Starliner's return to Earth. Do you think Starliner will return on June 22nd? We will have to wait and see how it progresses, and the impact it has on the space industry. Thanks for watching. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel, and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member, so click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.